Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today we're checking out a 2023 Toyota Sequoia four-wheel drive in the Platinum Hybrid trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 265-60 Yokohama tires wrapped around 20-inch alloy wheels with a dark gray gloss finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors on all four wheels. This vehicle is in a metallic silver color and on camera it's just going to look like a silver. It, it is a nice color, especially on this type of vehicle. So here in the front, a lot of airflow. So engine, transmission, climate control, hybrid system, all that needs airflow. So we have airflow starting here at the bottom portions here. There's a section here that is open. And then of course the grill area, wide open. And then there's active grill shutters there in the center part. There's airflow here and here. So a lot of airflow. Now right here is the, the badge. And the badge has airflow as well. So just completely allowing air to go through there. There's a camera located here in the center. And then this is the radar adaptive cruise control sensor. There's also parking sensors here in the front. Some, are, some of them are integrated here. The other ones are in integrated here, kind of blended in nicely. LED multi-projector fog lights are here at the bottom. There's three on each side. So you got one, two, three little projectors there. And I do have a night video showing you what it looks like going down the road, the headlights, interior lights, all that stuff. And the headlights, speaking of them, uh, it has a like a glow accent light here, but it also has a quad projector. So there's four projectors on each side and for your low and your high beams. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like at nighttime. It's, it's really impressive actually, uh, the headlight system. This entire grill area is a gloss black, including this area here as well. But then the very bottom is a flat black. Uh, but this is also surrounded by a chrome trim piece as well. Looking at the profile, uh, instead of going with the flat black, which is down here, they're going with a gloss black around the wheel wells. And then they conveniently li leave this area open here and here. And then there is a power side step here at the bottom. And then more gloss black here. And then it continues there at the very back. There's a little bit of a mud flap there and right here. Now this area here on the door is a gloss black and it has platinum written right in here. It does have body colored handles. And you'll notice that the glass is, is privacy glass here in the back. And then they went ahead, which is good I think, is they blacked out uh, this, these pillars here. So that way it kind of solidifies all the glass, even the, right here in the front pillar. Uh, and then you have a flat black side mirror. Gloss black on the roof rail. So. Uh, silver, gloss black, flat black, all of that kind of stuff. And then the wheels are a dark gray. So it's kind of interesting. But a uh, really interesting uh, style of the vehicle. A lot of really aggressive lines here and right here. So it's one of those things where it's just aesthetic. So you got to decide whether you like it or not. It does have the iForce Max badging here on the side of the hood. And there's also more cameras underneath these side mirrors. And these side mirrors are a major blind spot. So they kind of get in the way a lot. And I mention this a lot because I think it's a big deal. Now the upper portion is powered right here. And then the bottom portion, you just use your hand to move it back and forth. But it's a wide angle, so it doesn't. Once you get it set, you're fine with it. And then the blind spot detection system, a little indicator is here on the side. This is what the key looks like. It's a full proximity key system. Uh, you can use the vehicle 100% just by having this in your pocket. And it's relatively light, but it has a large size to it. Has the lock, unlock, the ability to open up the power lift gate. A panic button. Let's go ahead and press that. Okay, so okay horn, I guess. Uh, there's also a physical key on the inside as well. You can slide that out if you need it. But as long as you have this key with you, it could be in a bag, in your pocket, as long as it's on the outside of either the front or the front doors, front or passenger uh, front doors here, you can lock the doors by placing your hand or finger over this little sensor indicated by this dimple. And right now I have it set to where it folds the side mirrors in when you do this, because they do stick out quite a bit. Uh, now, if you want to unlock it, you simply, you notice there's some gloss black here as well, of course. And then 
you just put your hand behind the handle. There's a sensor back here. It senses the key on the outside of the door and it allows you access to the vehicle. There's also a physical key location here on the driver's side only. And when you open the door, these side steps pop out. And then when you close the door, they go back in. So go ahead and open up this door so you can see them pop out and ready to go. And they're strong. I mean, no problem as far as climbing in the vehicle. And you can turn them off if you don't want them to pop out. Uh, you could turn that feature off if you want, or you can leave them out if you want to. It's, uh, it's up to you. It does have this little switch, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. So the door covers most of this threshold area. Not completely all the way to the bottom, but most of that threshold area is covered up by this door. And there's a seal there as well to try to keep that area relatively clean. Here's the inside of the passenger side door, and it's mostly black. Um, and it does have some silver accents there and blue stitching, which is kind of neat. Cons considering this is the hi a hybrid vehicle, and for some reason blue is associated with hybrids. You notice that on the badging and stuff. So this is a soft touch here, here, and it, like it's not super soft, but it is kind of like a, a hard surface with a soft layer over top. This is hard touch. This is soft. This is the softest part right here in your arm. The rest of it is the hard touch plastic here at the bottom. Now there's a, there's a tiny pocket right here. It's actually the handle, but you can utilize it as a pocket and it has a little carpet at the bottom. Door controls are there. Little tiny shelf pocket here. It does have a night, uh, a light in there as well. You can check out my night video for that. And then there is some storage at the very bottom storage compartment. I'm kind of surprised at how thin it is of the amount of storage on the door anyway. So there's the threshold, no fancy seal plate or anything, but there's a threshold. It does have plastic protection, I guess. And then the passenger seat is powered as a four-way lumbar adjustment. You can tilt the back. You can actually raise the seat, tilt it, and all that stuff. So there's a lot of functionality here on the passenger side. Here's the leather trimmed seats, and they do have the blue stitching like we saw on the door. They're also perforated. Good portions of them are perforated because it is a heated and ventilated seat. You see there's more perforations here on the back than the bottom. For some reason it kind of fades and then to a solid part right there. So that kind of limits a little bit of the, the, uh, the cooling effect of the airflow at least. And here's the leg room floor mat hooks in place in two places and you see it kind of kind of surprised at how much you know not a huge amount of space here for a truck or for a vehicle this huge um, but you know that's the way it is it does have a lot of room in the back so we'll see so this is a hard touch surface locking glove compartment smooth plastic and it has like this little shelf system in there Uh, this is a soft surface here, then it has the blue stitching and a double double stitch there. And you have the platinum badge kind of blending in. You can barely see it. Hopefully you can see it. Looks pretty cool. And then the uh, right up here is a hard touch, non-reflective dashboard. There is a handle on all four doors to help you get in and out of the vehicle, which is nice. And then there's a pocket at the very top right here. It's kind of hidden. Maybe I'll show you that when we get inside the vehicle. There's a 12 volt power supply there as well. Check out that sunroof. Huge sunroof. It does have a shade, and I'll show you that. You see the swing of the door here in the front, and there's lots of room getting in and out of the vehicle. There's no problem whatsoever. You're not going to be bumping your head or anything like that. Uh, really, the only limitation is the leg room right in that area. Just kind of, you know, I guess if you have really long legs, it might be an issue, but it's not really a big deal. And also, the this threshold area, there's no like, it's just kind of flat. It's not like a big hump that you got to get over to get in the vehicle. So, as far as getting in and out there in the front, it's fine. Here in the back, look at the swing of the door. Swing of the door is nice. It's almost at a 90 degree angle. Uh, lots of room, headroom, leg room, all that stuff. Just a tremendous. <laughs> Uh, just a tremendous amount of room back here. 
So this is where it kind of shines, the second row, really, as far as the roominess. Here's the back door and similar styling. Uh, you got the soft surface here, here, hard surfaces down here. This is soft, a little bit less soft than the front, it feels like. Then you pocket there, here, and at the bottom. Blue stitching. Now the back doors have the retractable shades. So you can put those up if you want in addition to the privacy glass. There's a the threshold, and once again, it covers up most of that threshold area, the door does. And then you have more uh, sill plates, or really just protective pieces here, here, and then here. So you can access the third row a little bit easier, kind of like a little step system. So this has the uh, individual captain's chairs here in the second row. Uh, it does have the armrests that come down. These are heated and cooled, or heated and ventilated seats. These are ratcheted armrests. Places for car seats here on the second row, but not the third row, which is interesting. Pretty good amount of leg room back here. Huge hump in the middle. You can see it has the handles back here. Pockets on the back of both front seats. There's cup holders that are accessible to the front and rear passengers, or second row passengers. And then there's your climate control that you can adjust it back here. It's in the middle, that's nice. Heated and ventilated. It's a three stage here in the second row seats. Three stage heated seats and three stage vented seats. That's awesome. And then there is two USB ports, USB A and USB C. And then you also have a power inverter 120 volts, 400 watts, or 100 watts, depending on if the vehicle is running or not. There's some cup holders there, a little storage space in this plastic compartment there in the middle. You got some lights on the either side of the sunroof. And this some really interior lights. There's some serious drawbacks. You got to check out my night video. It is very <laughs> shocking when you consider the price of the vehicle of $80,000. Okay, so these seats, um, you can fold them down into like a cargo mode like that. Um, then you can let's go ahead and lift it back up repeat the process because i kind of skipped a step it's so actually you lift this up and it releases the whole thing and goes up and then if you want to go to cargo mode you push it back down and snap it in place so this is how you access the third row right through here you see step 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 right on in and access the third row you can see the third row is quite wide a lot of like basically three smaller passengers i guess can fit back here and you can lower the seats by pushing buttons. So there's buttons here, there's buttons in the back. So you can lower those third row seats if you need to add to your cargo space or lift them back up. Uh, so it's pretty neat. You have cup holders. There's also retractable uh, shades here in these windows. Uh, there's also USB ports. There's actually one over there. It's in this weird spot. It's right there. Um, so it's kind of in a weird spot. I guess you're supposed, it's supposed to be accessible to the third row passengers in the cargo area, I guess, if you want to charge something, I'm not sure. Uh, but you notice there's no latch or isofix system here for the car seats in the third row, which I thought was kind of interesting, considering this would be a good spot for them. And you can move these seats forward and back. They're in the most forward position. That's why the leg room is kind of limiting right there. But you notice that the seats aren't that high off the floor to begin with. So even though it's a big wide seat, uh, as far as the height off the floor, not very comfortable. And also, uh, you know, like just overall leg room is gonna be limited because of that, just having the seat so low to the ground. Uh, but anyways, that's just the way it is. So this is the way the seats are. You kind of flip them up and this is spring loaded. So it's not like you have to lift up on the seat. You do have to push it down, which is much, it's real easy to do. Snaps in place. And uh, that was what I call the cargo mode. Cause once you fold down the third row seat, it's kind of in line with that for the most part. And these seats do recline a little bit like so. I'm gonna leave this seat like that for right now. Actually, 
like that. And I'll show you how it looks when we fold the third row seat down. Looking at the back of the vehicle, it has, in addition to the roof rails, gloss black, a little gloss black shark fin antenna right there in the center. The third brake light is at the top of the glass right here, LEDs in the rear spoiler. And then it has the wiper here. Now it would be nice if it had the wiper up in here swinging down, but that's just the way it is. And this glass can actually be opened. Uh, you just press this button right here when it's unlocked. And you lift it up and you can access the cargo area, which is nice at certain times. So you can see more gloss black and it has the Sequoia name back here across the back. Just in case you forget how to spell it, you can quickly reference it, reference it right there. These are actually reflectors. They're not lights here at the bottom. And then this is a parking light, uh, parking sensor, sorry here across the back, integrated in the black portion. Uh, you can also get a, a trailer hitch. It goes behind that cover. And you'll notice a little tiny symbol right here. I don't know if you can see that. That is for the kick spot. So you kick your foot there and it opens up uh, the power lift gate. So it's nice to have a little, have certainty on where you want to, you're supposed to kick your foot instead of just kind of kicking it around and guessing, you know, so to, to know right where to kick because it kind of gets ridiculous when you're kicking all over the place and your hands are full and you're at the grocery store or something. Uh, but anyways, and then you start fishing your key out of your pocket and then, then it lifts up, you know, that kind of thing. At least that's what happened with, with me. All right, so here is the backup camera in that tacked on one-sided, lopsided place that doesn't look like uh, it should be on a modern vehicle, but it is. Uh, but you can use the key or you can press a button under here to lift it up. There's also a button on the inside as well, in addition to do the kick thing. And it has speakers located under here as well, and it sounds pretty good when you have this up, just kind of tailgating. Uh, but there's no lights, unfortunately. If you have all the seats occupied with passengers, uh, this is the cargo space. And it's not too bad, uh, but it has this kind of, to me it's a little bit silly. Um, it has this thing right here. It's like this shelf that's removable. So let me show you what it looks like without the shelf. So you can see it's kind of like it goes low and then goes high. And then when you lower the seat, it's even higher. So it has like this step pyramid uh, that kind of tends to tumble things out the door. When you go to the store and you get your groceries in here, uh, it's, it tends to, you open up the back gate, it tends to, everything, things tend to tumble out. I'll just say that because it has this uh, kind of tendency to push it out. Um, but anyways, that's where the accessing things through the, the glass helps out. Uh, but to mitigate that, to mitigate that, you add this kind of kind of heavy-duty shelf right here. So kind of hooks in like so, like that. So now we have kind of a flat surface. So it has to have this part, and then it has these flaps to make sure it's kind of similar height as that. But even then, you still, when you fold the seat down, it's another another tier higher. But then you have this kind of unusable space under there. When you do that, there's just like this little sliver of space that kind of gets wasted unless you have these tiny items you can wedge under there. Now, you can take this shelf and lift it up to a higher level, like so. Um, but it just kind of, as far as like you know, usability, I haven't really seen a uh, use for that unless you're just standing here and you want to use it as like a little bit of a bench uh, it even goes higher it's hard to do with one hand all right yeah all right so there you go higher so now we have this other height uh, and it's a little bit of a pain to manipulate but once you get it in place it has these flaps that are kind of hanging hanging there um, and then, so, anyways, that's, that's basically the way it's the design to be used as like this, 
multiple tier shelf and it's kind of a heavy shelf so you kind of have to have to, to use two hands trying to do it with one hand with the camera in my other hand it's not really that easy you can technically uh, put it here at the bottom so let's go ahead and do that like so but then you notice the flaps kind of get in the way again so kind of have to push them down like that i guess so it just seems like it wasn't really thought out, practically thought out this cargo area. It, it, it would be nice if it was just like a flat surface and you put your stuff in there, right? Um, so having all this complexity, I would probably just take this out completely and just not even use it. It just adds another layer of complexity that just doesn't really help much. Uh, but that's, you know, that's the thing. Another thing that's kind of interesting is you got uh, this compartment here on the left side. And there's the jack for the spare tire. And then there's the battery here behind this comp in this compartment. And so the shelf is actually just resting on this plastic door. So I wonder what the weight limit uh, is with that. And then here on the right side... There's another door, and this is where you'll find the tools for the spare tire. And then, of course, the spare tire is underneath the vehicle. So you got, um, so you got three different locations that you have to access when you have a, need to change the tire. You know, so you have to access all these different places. So you got to get everything out of the way. All right. Now it has a single light here on the right side, and it's very low position. And it's probably one of the worst at nighttime uh, visibility as far as the, the lighting in the cargo area. Probably the worst I've seen in pretty much any vehicle except for the vehicle that just doesn't have a light at all. So that's something to consider. You can see it at nighttime. I have a video at night that just looks ridiculous. Uh, you just take one thing and put it here and it blocks all the light. And even if the, the amount of light this gives off is only in this little section right here, and then the rest of it's all dark. And it's, you know, so it's just ridiculous. There is a power inverter, another one back here, 120 volts, 400 watts to 100 watts, depending on if the vehicle's running, it's a three prong. And that USB port I was telling you about is right here, USB-A. All right, so you can move these seats forward and back like so so that's the back position so let's look at that and I, I spend a little bit of time here in the back because this is where people buy a vehicle like this because of the the seating and the the amount of seating it has and suppose of the amount of room it has so you can see there gives a lot more leg room here than before but still the seats low to the ground All right, so now let's go ahead and fold this right seat down using this button. I'll go ahead and fold it down. And the headrest will automatically fold too, which is nice. So it's kind of at a similar height as that second row. But you'll notice it's still nowhere near the level of the actual back surface. Uh, so, yeah, I find that kind of interesting. And so if you were to look, fold the seats down and then put that this shelf right here, it kind of helps with that. It kind of adds to that that additional space there. Um, but let's say you put your groceries there or whatever, uh, and then you slam on the brakes, it's, your, your groceries are just going to fall there, there on the floor. It's just kind of like this uh, surf flat surface that's not really, you know, containing anything it's just it's just like maybe you could put a big box there or something maybe that's what the purpose is um but yeah you're gonna have to adapt your your cargo space uh and just to adapt to its in my opinion dysfunctional space that it has you're just gonna have to figure out how you can make it work for you i guess there's another usb port there that's a usb um a in that little compartment Okay, so folding down the power lift gate, there's actually two buttons. One, fold it, fold it down and walk away, or uh, push this, 
and it locks the vehicle when it folds it down. So you, so you just close it or close it and lock the vehicle basically, that's what it's for. And it comes down relatively slow. Slow and easy, which is nice. Not really a fan of the one that the ones that kind of flop down and slam, especially when you got kids around. Right in here is the camera for the rear view camera. It's not the backup camera, which is located here. Uh, the rear view camera, um, I'll show you in a second. Let's go ahead and open this up. You see what I'm talking about. So it has this little peekaboo uh, right here, but there's the actual camera. And basically what it's doing is uh, it gives you the option of a mirror here on the rear view mirror or a camera. So it's really easy to access and clean um, when you lift this up. So it's in a good location too. I mean, it's right there at the same height as the rear view camera. I mean, the rear view mirror, similar height, and it's in the very center of the vehicle. Uh, so it works really well. You can also zoom in out, zoom in and out. You can adjust the brightness, the contrast, uh, the tilts and all that stuff up and down. There's a lot of adjustments on it, but um, you will need to occasionally clean it you know, uh, especially if kids are like putting their hands all over it or whatever. But, um, but yeah, I just want to point that out where it is located. It does have a locking fuel door and it's on the driver's side and has a traditional cap, tether, and a place to hang the cap here on the inside of the door. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle to start it up, you just press and hold the brake and press this blue button. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. The floor mat hooks in place in two places. There's the accelerator, brake pedal, and a nice big footrest here on the left side. Let's take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there's a latch basically right here in the center. There's a center part, you just reach in right here, and it's down at the bottom. Move it to the left and lift up. It takes no energy at all to lift it up. So there's the latch right there. That's what you're actually doing. Um, but it's spring-loaded, or it has the the, uh, the the shocks or whatever they're called there on the sides, and it lifts it up for you. So, like, you ha it takes no energy. It just holds it up. But it doesn't go up very far. That's as high as it goes. So, that's a little frustrating sometimes, having a hood that does it just, like, in your way, bumping your head or whatever. All right, so here's the engine compartment. And... A lot of empty space here. It does have the active grill shutters. Uh, and then there's some fans. Cooling for the engine and the climate control there as well. There's a filter box. And we saw where the battery was located in the back. Uh, this right here, it's like a, uh, the cover is kind of hard on surface on here on the top. Uh, but underneath it, it has a some softer material. It kind of helps with the noise and stuff like that. The iForce Max is actually a twin-turbo V6. It's a V6 hybrid. Uh, so it has a motor and a generator in addition to the gasoline engine. And it has a 10-speed automatic transmission. And it puts out a total of 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque. So, and it of course is a four-wheel drive system. Uh, and the thing about the turbo system is when you're driving it, it doesn't feel like it has that much power, you know, relative to what it says, like 583 pound-feet of torque, until you get the RPMs up and boy, does it come to life. A uh, big, heavy vehicle like this, it just takes off. Uh, very impressive acceleration. Really fun to drive. It's, a, it's much better than the previous Sequoia generation. Uh, <laughs> much more fun to drive. And uh, it, as far as like overall weight and feel, it does feel like a heavy vehicle and all that stuff, but it handles fairly well. You know, it just feels, it's a huge improvement in my opinion over the, the previous generation. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. So the power windows are here, so it's one touch up and down, even for the back windows. And you can see the back windows go all the way down. Some vehicles don't do that. They kind of go halfway or three quarters or something like that. Um, and then the front glass, it's not laminated or anything. You can see how fast it goes. 
And the side mirrors, uh, they have the ability to fold in, so you can fold them in like so. Fold them out. And then if you put it in the center position here, in the A, automatic set, uh, position, they'll fold in when you lock the vehicle. Now to adjust the upper portion, you just turn this knob to the left or right. And then once you get it in that left or right position, you can move this like a little joystick and adjust the glass. You kind of move it around like a little joystick to adjust it. And then you can put it in a center position to, act, to avoid accidentally adjusting it once you get it set. So there's two presets for the power seat. This is also for the power uh, steering column as well. It does have an entry exit uh, setting as well. You, you, you can turn that on if you want. So the driver's seat, of course, has to one up the passenger seat as far as functionality. It has the four-way lumbar adjustment, the ability to raise, lower, tilt, and all that stuff, uh, the seat, but it also has this thigh extension. So I have it extended out quite a bit. Let me go ahead and pull it back so you can see the different positions that it takes. So this seat, uh, for me, it's not 100% perfect. It's not quite as comfortable as I would like it to be. Um, but of course, it's up to you. Check it out for yourself. There's a lot of adjustments, so you can adjust it and get it, uh, you know, pretty good amount of comfort. I just couldn't get it perfect for me. So it's something you have to check out for yourself. Left of the steering column, there's a whole bunch of buttons right here. We already saw the fuel door release. This is the automatic high beams, which you can turn on or off. I recommend being very careful with it because I had some issues with it so far. Um, so you can turn it off easily, which is nice. Uh, there is actually a light at the where the, the tag light is, and it kind of shines on the ground. L additional light back there. It's not a huge deal, but it does help out a lot. You can turn it on, turn it off, or have it turn on with the door there in the center. Uh, you press this button to, you just keep repeatedly press that to cycle through the different brightness levels on the interior gauges and other lights as well. You can reset the trip here. Uh, the parking sensors, you can turn off if you want to turn those off. Right in here, this is for the side steps. So right here, these side steps here, you can have them out, automatic or off. So depending on where you want them, uh, I have them set at automatic so when you open the door, they pop out. Heated steering wheel. Uh, the button right here, you can turn that on. And there, to turn on those um, power inverters, you will need to push this button. And then there's lights here for on the side mirrors. They actually shine kind of in the blind spots of the vehicle when I show what it looks like at nighttime. And then this button is to extend out the side mirrors. So when you press that, they pop out. So if you're towing a trailer or something like that, you get an additional, looks like four or five inches uh, out from the vehicle press it again and they go back in and I just want to mention again if you did if you missed it these side mirrors are a big problem as far as visibility they get in your way all the time so the tilt and telescoping steering column is controlled right here it's powered which is nice before I put the shade up I uh, just want to point out a few things one is uh, the heads-up display so the heads-up display is relatively clear it has useful information it's not annoying it doesn't get in the way um, it's fine I hadn't had any problems with it whatsoever it's a little bit on the blurry side sometimes for my eyes I don't, I'm not sure what it is the uh, the the Tundra that I drove before had a blurry more blurry uh, heads-up display this one has a little bit of that but it's a lot better there's also an integrated dash cam here with a action button and so you can press that action button and it records audio and video uh, and you can you know save a, a short recording so you press and hold that button it records until you press and hold it again and then there's a little card right there it's a micro SD card and you can turn the camera on or off as well there as well and then you can also pair it with your phone there's an app you can also take the and, and view the footage and everything but you can also uh, play it on your desktop computer as well there's a there's a PC app as well uh, now it does record your geolocation and the g-forces of the vehicle and stuff like that so it's a really good dash cam really good uh, and it's integrated nicely as well there's also a storage compartment here with a 12 volt power supply uh, that you can 
access. It's kind of out of sight, out of mind. You don't really notice it. Um, but if you know it's there, you can kind of put some stuff, some stuff there if you want. But if you put stuff there, you might easily forget about it. So, you know, you want to keep that in mind because you don't really see it. It's just completely out of the way. So you might accidentally leave something in the sun or whatever. I'm sitting in the driver's seat. I had the driver's seat all the way back and all the way down. So you can see the potential leg room here. And it's actually a little bit too far back for me to drive. So I would have to pull it up just a little bit. Uh, so there's a pretty good amount of leg room here in the front. Heated steering wheel looks really nice. Big, uh, like a thick portion there at the bottom. And then it kind of tapers and gets thinner as you go towards the top. Really comfortable and a little bit of a give to the surface. So it's not a super hard steering wheel. But, uh, but yeah, it feels nice. It looks nice. No problems with the steering wheel, and, the, and the, the buttons are easily used as well. So here, you can see this gloss black portion here at the bottom. Those are kind of, kind of connected, uh, because you have your volume for the radio, voice recognition, change the tracks through your radio, and to change your audio source using that mode button. Now right above it, it's a separate deal. This is the cruise control. So you turn it on, you can set, resume, cancel, Lane departure uh, system, you can activate that so it keeps an eye on the road and will actually you know, alert you if you're going over the lines, that kind of thing. And then the adaptive cruise control, you can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you there. And, and on this vehicle, I tend to keep it at its furthest distance. So that way, it, it just seems like it follows a little bit too close uh, if I don't. Here on the left side, you see this back button, these arrows, this okay and up and down. Um, those correspond with the screen. We'll get to that in a minute. And then this button right here is for answering and hanging up on a call. So if somebody's calling you with the Bluetooth system, you press it to answer, and when you're done, you press it again to hang up. Windshield wiper controls are here for the front and rear, and it also has the uh, rain sensing system as well, automatic, on the front. Turn signals here, but it also has the headlight switches. So DRL off turns all the exterior lights off, automatic, parking and then there's the headlights. Fog lights are controlled here. All right, so the basically the gauges are a full digital screen. And so right now it shows the digital speedometer there in the middle. It shows the RPMs around the outside. The status of your battery, oil pressure, fuel gauge, engine coolant temperature, the status of the turbos here, which is the iForce. Max is the battery system. Uh, so it's charging and discharging constantly, the max system. Uh, so, and that gives you the status there of the battery. Uh, so right now, like the engine just turned off. We don't need the engine to just sit here so we can use the battery power at certain times, depending on what we're doing. So it just seamlessly does it in the background. You don't have to interact with that system at all, really. You just drive the vehicle and it just does it itself. All right, so here on the left side, you can see the outside temperature, digital clock, stuff like that. But here on the left side, right here, using these buttons, the up and down, left, right, okay, and back, uh, we can get more information there. So right now it's showing the total average miles per gallon, 17.9. That's that's the high, I think that's about the highest I've gotten it. Um, and then it has the distance to empty. So if we scroll down, you can see it's part of a menu system. And you can see the icon at the top. If we scroll to the right and left, we change to the next icon. This first one has like a little leaf. The next one has like a little arrow, navigation arrow, basically the digital compass. Scrolling to the right, this will be our whatever radio is doing. We can scroll up and down, change uh, the whatever whatever we happen to be doing. It depends on what you're doing. And then you scroll to the right again. Uh, this would be information about the vehicle. This is right now your trailer uh, connection and the gain for the trailer brake gain control. Scrolling down gives you more information about the, the trailer. And then the trip, you can reset there. And then here is the status of the air pressure of the vehicle, of the tires. All right, it goes back to the beginning, scrolling to the right. This is where you can go into the different settings. Uh, so pre-collision system, lane departure alert, blind spot, management, blind spot 
detection system and rear cross traffic alert, which is down here, parking sensors, it gives, basically gives you the status. Um, and then the HUD, you can press that and hold the OK button. You go in and to adjust the HUD here, HUD rotation, brightness. Uh, you can choose what you want to put on there. You go ahead and turn everything on. Hit the back button. Go back out of that. All right, road sign. Uh, road sign uh, identifies the road signs, and it'll pop up here on the screen, like le what the last speedometer, speed limit sign said, that kind of thing. Then you can customize the right side here. Let's go back up here. Customize the right side. We can have boost gauges. We can have pitch and roll instead. We can have tow gauges. So depending on what we're doing, we can customize that right side. Or we can just turn it off if you want. Just have nothing over there. Simplify the screen a little bit. But we'll go ahead and put the boost gauges back up. All right. The trailer light check is pretty cool. So that way you can uh, basically hook up the trailer and then turn that on and then you can check the lights without sitting there going in and out of the vehicle a lot, you know, pressing, uh, especially the brake pedal, you have to get somebody else to check, help you check that. But in this case, it just kind of has this sequence that it goes through and you can check it. All right. So yeah, those are different options there that you can go through. And you scroll to the right is the last uh, icon and it is just a stored messages. Anything like that will pop up. It'll store it right there. Any kind of message that it appears will show up here. Scrolling to the right again brings you back to the original icon, which is that leaf right there. So that's kind of a quick rundown of the information on that screen. Now there's the actual trailer brake gain control. So you can adjust the trailer brakes. And here is the big screen. Now it's a big screen and it's relatively easy to use partially because there's not a lot on here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there is the navigation reimagined, which uh, once you subscribe, once you go to reimagine your navigation, it basically just, you have to have an app on your phone and it functions off of an app. So does it really have navigation? doesn't seem like it. It seems like it's a it's a function of an app system. So you have these icons here on the left side. So the top one is the quote asterisk navigation, I guess you could say. Uh, the next one is radio. So you have different audio sources here. So you can have your Bluetooth, you can have radio, Apple Music, Amazon Music. Let's go to radio. So you can see it has little icons here. And what's playing, you got favorites, you can direct tune. And you got FM and AM radios. Change the different sources. All right, back to the radio. All right. And then you got satellite radio. The next one is your phone. Uh, once you pair your phones, you have access to them here. And you, you can pair multiple phones and it, uh, it operates on a priority system. The next one is about your vehicle, so your miles per hour, uh, trip range, and trip duration, as well as your miles per gallon. And you can clear the data here if you want, and then you have a history as well. And then the last one, little icon here, is the uh, settings. So you got personal info, Bluetooth devices, general settings. Notifications, Wi-Fi, display, sound and media, Customize the vehicle, lights, door control, boarding and exit. Customize the drive mode, which is nice. Powertrain, suspension and steering. And then the climate control here. And then you have voice search. Sort of like, uh, like the Hey Google type thing.
dealer information, info and security, software update, and then your different apps here. And then you have remote, con remote connect. Let's get out of that. All right, so that's kind of like what you do. There's a different icons, you can connect through, and pretty basic system here. All right, so climate control is down here. And it has the, the temperature for the driver, the passenger. You can also control the rear by toggling that little switch. And then fan speed, where you want the air to blow. You can sync both the driver and passenger and rear if you want. Uh, this is the volume for the radio. And then you have the heated and ventilated seats for the driver. So you can see a three stage. Heated and ventilated seats for the passenger. And then you have physical buttons here, recirculate the air. Um, front and rear defrosters. When you turn on the rear defrosters, it also turns on the heated side mirrors. You have an automatic function. You can turn the system off if you want. And then this is if you don't want any climate control to go to the back. You just want it here in the front. Let's say you're driving by yourself. You can turn that on. Then there's a USB port here. Just below that is more toggle switches. Um, so we have the... So this button right here is for the backup guide for helping you back up the trailer. Um, this is to view the camera system and when you're just sitting in park when you press the view button This is what it shows um, It's okay. I guess I mean it kind of helps out a little bit. You can see around the vehicle uh, We're gonna look at what the the full camera system actually can do because it's a lot more advanced than this and then the and then it, it ends in that view Traction control you can turn it off here default will be on four-way flashers. You can raise and lower the vehicle so like say it has the ability to raise and lower um, the suspension system. So you could, you could go up and down. It'll actually show right here that it's, that it's moving. And I'm putting it in the high position. Um, go ahead and put it down. And it slowly adjusts up and down. So if you want it the high position, if you like, say you're in a, you know, you need a little bit more ground clearance, that kind of thing, or if you want it in the low position, so it's easy to get in and out of the vehicle. Uh, so those are useful features there. Electronic parking brake with a brake hold. When you turn that on, it'll hold the brake for you while you're sitting at a stoplight or stop sign. You just come to a complete stop, and it'll hold the brake for you basically for the, with, when that feature is on. And that's different than the electronic parking brake. And it actually has the ability to have the uh, electronic parking brake automatically applied when you put it in park, which I like that feature. So I have it set that like that now. It's a place to put your cell phone that actually has a wireless charger there. Now, if your th case is too thick, then it might not start charging. But, you know, I had to take my phone out of the case in order to charge on this one cup holders, little articulating arms in here. So here's the shifter. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse. And now we'll look at the actual functionality of the camera because the camera system is really good. And I really, I wish they could just push that button, uh, this view button, and actually see this screen instead of the other little animation thing because this is more useful to me. So now we're in review, reverse. And so you can see the backup camera behind us, but we can also see this top-down view, which does a really good job. It's big, it fills up the whole screen, and uh, it looks really good. It stitches the, the different views together nicely. You can see the lines on the, the parking lot are straight. Uh, so yeah, it gives you good visibility. But when you're in this screen, um, there's this automatic function. When you hit, when you turn that on, it basically, when you when you go driving very slow, and when you're stopped, when you're in drive or reverse, it's going to automatically pop this camera system up. And with the, the poor visibility here in the front because of the side mirrors and the pillars and the hood and all that stuff, this is really handy to have to see around the vehicle. Now, you can get additional views. So you have the ability to see the front, the back. Even though we're in reverse, we can see the front sides. So that's the front wheels there. It basically takes away the car and just shows the sides there. So you can see the wheels moving. So we can get a real precise view of right close to the vehicle if we're getting close to something. Same thing for the rear wheels. So that's the back wheels. It's looking uh, in the back area there. And, you know, we can kind of fine tune it. 
and focus on a particular thing, which is nice. And since we're in reverse, let's go back to the uh, reverse camera. Now, if we don't want the top down view, we can take that away if we want and just focus on this. But you notice the backup camera is in, it's kind of off to one side. Um, so, so they have to have these, these lines here kind of adjusted over a little bit. Be nice if, it was, if the actual camera's in the center, basically. Uh, you can adjust the view of those lines if you want, depending on, on your needs. And of course, you could turn the automatic camera system on or off there. And same thing in drive. So when you put it in drive, we can have a default view, uh, but I would just have this as the default view for me anyways, depending on your situation. All right, so that's the neutral drive, and then you can put it over here and manually uh, change the gears. So you can bump it like a ratchet shifter. You'll know what gear you're in because it'll show right here. So kind of bump it there. So it doesn't have like paddle shifters. It has this ratchet shifter. This is handy for like downshifting, getting engine braking, if you're going down a hill, that kind of thing. And here's your drive modes. And there's the four-wheel drive system. So the drive modes are, you just turn this knob and you can see it has different ones here. So there's normal, let's go all the way to the bottom. <laughs> so we got eco, comfort, normal, sport, sport S, and then custom. So remember we saw the custom, uh, the, the place where you customize it. And you'll notice it turns blue different areas of the vehicle that's the areas in which it's actually going to adjust so some of them adjust the suspension some of it just adjust uh, the engine transmission that kind of thing for me normal works best overall it just seems like normal is the best for me um, you know sometimes the sport systems it just kind of revs the engine up too much and it just does it feels like it's getting in its own way uh, so this is one of those situations where I just like to keep it normal. It, it doesn't add anything to to change the drive mode, um, really. I mean, you might put in a custom mode probably would be, I mean, if I was driving this vehicle all the time, I would probably customize a drive mode. Uh, but for me right now, normal is, just feels like the best. And then of course there's the four wheel drive high and four wheel drive low, default will be the two wheel drive high. There's a fully automatic system there uh, as far as electronically controlled four wheel drive system. Okay, so this center area, this is a large uh, center console. Um, it does take up a lot of room and the functionality is, I'll let you be the judge of the, the functionality. Um, so it has a small pocket here, another pocket here. You can push this back out of the way, access the larger pocket in the bottom if you want. There's a button here or here. You can press the one of those, lift up this whole thing, and it kind of doesn't slap back down on you. It does a little bit of a spring loaded to it. You can lift it up, and it has a compartment here. Place to put coins there, USB ports, USB A and C there. And that's once again we have like this tier system. And it has like this little uh, little guy right here that you can put in place. Uh, so you can have different little compartments in here if you want. I don't know if that's the best use of this this space, but you know, it depends on your needs. All right, the rear view mirror. It actually does have a mirror, and it's a auto dim mirror. There's home link garage door opener controls here, but if you want the rear view camera, it's actually auto dimming right now, uh, and the side mirrors are auto dimming. See that there. And there, because I have the shade over the light sensor, which is located here on the right side, it feels like. Um, but if you want the rear view camera, you just pull this forward like so, and it has the rear view camera. And let's go ahead and move the shade so we don't get this uh, dimmer version of it, because it is a really nice crystal clear uh, view out the vehicle in the back. And you can adjust it. There's little adjustments here. There's adjust the brightness, the different uh, tilt and up and down, left to right, zooming in and out, the brightness um, and all that stuff. So yeah, 
I really like that camera system, especially a big vehicle like this. You've got a bunch of patch cinders back there. Can't really see with the actual mirror. So having that camera system is great, especially on the highway. You can see great behind you. Place to put your shades right here. And it's pretty big. You can put big Hollywood glasses in there. Uh, you got some tap lights here, here. And uh, the, the center of the shade is open here. I'll show you in a second. Uh, but you have the mood lights. I'll show you the mood lights at nighttime, but you can turn, turn them on or off here if you want. Uh, the interior lights, you can turn them all on, all off, or have them in the center position come on with the door. Uh, and there's a little light right here. I'll show you what that looks like at night. And then the roadside assistance here as well. The ability to open up the power lift gate. The vehicle has to be unlocked though. Uh, so let's look at the sunroof. Um, we'll look at that actually in a second. Let me show you this visor. It has a cloth, just like the roof. It has a cloth uh, material. It has a light here. It's very bright. The mirror. And has a clip on this side. This opens up and it slides. All right, so about the same thing on the other side as far as that visor. Okay, so this sunroof is massive. Look at this, look how huge it is. It goes all the way, extends there into the back. Kind of helps out with claustrophobia, I guess, if you're sitting in the second row. Uh, so you can open it up like so, or you can move it back. Press it again, goes a little bit further back. Press it and go forward. And to close the shade, there's a separate button. So there's the button there on the right side for the glass, and then there's a button here for the shade. And the shade covers like 99% of the light. Uh, it's actually like a cloth, and there's a little tiny bit of sparkle of light coming through, but almost 100% of the light gets blocked by that shade. Looking at the visibility in the back, uh, so you can see I actually have some seats down and some seats up. So you can see how much they get in the way of your visibility. Uh, with them, when they're down, you can see a lot better. I'll just say that. But there's pillars that get in the way. And of course, passenger, cargo, all that stuff's gonna uh, cause a visibility problem, potentially. So that's where the camera system comes in for the rear view camera the backup camera, the 360 camera system, the rear cross traffic alert, the blind spot de detection system, the parking sensors, all the technology helps out with driving the vehicle safer. Changing lanes, all that kind of stuff. But still, these side mirrors here in the front get in the way and it's, as you'll see, if you drive this vehicle, you'll see what I'm talking about. It is a major problem, uh, the design of these side mirrors. They're constantly getting in the way. But anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. And I'll have it, links in the description with a, a whole bunch more information. If you're searching for or you're shopping for a vehicle like this, you're considering this vehicle, and you're actually going to spend $80,000 on it, go ahead and click on the links. There's a web, It'll be go to my website with a whole bunch of information and maybe additional links depending on, um, you know, if there's any more information I can add, I'll just have everything in one spot so you can do your research uh, on this vehicle and e exhaustive research, basically, in addition to this video. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.